you're here. I love you. Even if you don't know him yet, put your hands together. You're about to be so blessed. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about some of the things you used to do. Hey Amen. I was a Christian all my life. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming. Everybody give him a big round of applause. <laughs> but that's not true. I, it would have been nice to be a Christian all my life, but... Uh, I started at the age of, actually, it's amazing because if you see, I just say real quick, the life of Paul, Paul was recruited, not by the disciples, Paul was recruited from the third heaven. That was his encounter from the third heaven. And my life started at the age of seven. Tell him about I, the necklace. The necklace that fell from the sky. Yeah, that from one. From the second heaven <laughs> at the age of seven. I had a necklace that fell from the skies. It's the seven principalities of the dark powers of the dark side. It fell at my feet. I picked it up. I put it in my pocket. I heard my mom call me, which was a familiar spirit, mimic the voice of my mother. Because my mom lived a mile away. I was a mile away from the neighborhood. And, I mean, I don't care how Puerto Rican you are. You can't yell that loud. <laughs> so it was impossible. So I went home, and I put the necklace on my neck. In my journey to the dark side, to Santeria, Palama Yumbe, and spiritualism started from the age of eight, first tarot card reading ceremonies. And then at the age of eight, I was going to demon church from, eight, from seven in the evening to five in the morning, being trained by warlocks and witches, how to take over region, change the atmosphere, do witchcraft, astral project, and make contract with demons. And to the age of 35, that I met Jesus Christ. You guys ready for this? <laughs> Um, question number one, um, you were not a devil worshiper. You, you were at a completely different rank. Talk a little bit about what that rank was and what you did. Basically, a lot of people say, well, I'm a satan. People say, I'm a satanist. That's like saying, uh, I'm Snoopy. <laughs> well, I'm Elmo from Sesame Street. Right? That's like a wannabe. That's pretty much the guy that wear a little black t-shirt with Metallica on it, playing another black and, and, you know, get a crazy haircut. My, my life was, I was in the satanic realms of the dark side. It's, they're called the shadows of the dark side, the highest level of the hierarchy. That I had a, I had a direct line and an opportunity to talk to, to, to the devil, Satan, for 25 years in his hierarchy of the satanic realm a spiritual warfare in the spirit realm. And when you would place a curse on someone like your brother and, and tell, him, tell him how that worked out. Well, I, my brother, I, I, we got into a riffraff and I put a curse on my brother. He did five years in jail to the curse and the witchcraft I did to him. And I want to promote something. All of my questions are coming from his book. I read his book, and it, the pages used to be white. Now they're all yellow because I highlighted everything. The book, he's got like eight books out. They're all phenomenal. But the book that I'm interviewing him on is Out of the Cauldron, which was his first book. It's his testimony book. I want to promote it like crazy. You can get it off of his website uh, or you can go straight to Amazon. Um, next question. Uh, the name of the book we're talking about is Out of the Cauldron. What is a cauldron? What is it made out of and how did you use it? The cauldron is basically, the devil's a copycat. He has nothing that is a great original. The devil can create stuff. He can fool you with stuff, but he can't create stuff. And what I mean by that, that there's nothing that the devil can create and have as original. The devil copies everything from the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So the kingdom of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, we know that, that Moses had the tabernacle, the meeting place, right? So the cauldron is assigned by the devil, where is the meeting place. It's an iron pot. A mine weighed about 150 pounds, and then he had the face of the devil on it, and had the horns on it, made out of cast iron. And the ingredients in the pot was basically uh, ingredients from different, from the earth, different uh, nine cemeteries, nine jails, uh, mental wards, because those were the ingredients that I would use to do witchcraft from people when I steal your personality and I steal your character. And I bring, I steal it from you in the spirit line. I bring it to my house and I attach your name on it. And if I had a picture or I had a piece of clothing or you represent who you are, and I do witchcraft to those demonic avenues, whether it's if it's a jail, 
I can put you in jail, which is hospital. I can send you to the hospital to get an unnecessary operation so you can die in the operating room. I'm going to show you a picture of a, a, a children's toy. I, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure um, where we saw this picture, but I'm going to show you a picture of a toy, and I want you to tell me your thoughts about the toy. Uh, the title of the toy says, Magic Mixes, Magical Misting Cauldron. It's the number one most popular toy of 2021. Uh, tell everybody what your thoughts are when you look at that toy. The, the, the toy, I can get up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, 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 I'm going to break down that toy. See, people don't know because the church, the Bible says, my people prior to the lack of knowledge. Right? So if you buy that toy for your kid, right? This is the card drink. Right? This is the meeting place right here. The meeting place is here with the devil. You see it, it looks cute, it looks like a toy, but it's not. It just, it just, it just, the devil is into culture, he's into fashion, and he's into identity. So this is the cauldron. I had one of those in real life, but not like this. It was the, the real deal. But this is just a, 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 a copycat of to entangle and, in, and twist your kid into the dark side. You see the cauldron, this is the demon. So the demon operates with this. Understand? This is the demon operate this. This is the this is a, a, a replica that they will say this is the book. It calls it they call it the book, right? The book. They can't call it the Bible because there's only one Bible. But this is the book that you communicate with this and you make the contract with this. Now, once you make the contract with him, you operate with this, and then this is the, this is the manual to operate this and operate this, and these are the ingredients of witchcraft. And then this here, it, it, this here, it, 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 this is a, it's like a staff. It's like a a, a, a thing that you that you use it, it, the wand, right? You use the wand, but it's it just an, an agreement, a contract that you make with this to have this do with the principality. And these are the ingredients. And all this stuff is in here. The spells and the, all this stuff that's in here is just a contract with the devil. And if you see this, you see this, it's connected with this. And then this is connected with that. And you connect it with this. So this is just a cute, this wannabe, look-alike dog, but it's the principality behind it. I'm going to ask you a question that I didn't ask you in the first service. Uh, what's so cool about this interview is that uh, I didn't send him the questions ahead of time. Um, and so um, he's the real deal. I'm going to show you a picture of some tennis shoes. And um, uh, so go ahead and put those tennis shoes up there. Okay. Now, this right here is the, uh, the, the shoelace slot that's right there, okay? Now, this is an eyeball. Luminati. Yeah. yeah Tell me the, what your thoughts are about that. Yeah, you look at the pentagram, the three corners of the pentagram, one, two, three, the three corners of the pentagram, and the eyes represent Luminati, the one word order. It's right in your sneakers. So you're buying into this stuff. So you're buying into a system that you're supporting. You know, it, it's, it's mind-boggling how we, we don't see these things. And these are, the, you bring these things into your home. And whatever you bring to your home, it becomes part of your home, becomes part of who you are, your identity, and who you are in your home. So now you, you don't have Jesus in your home. You have mixture in your home. And people say, well, they're just a pair of sneakers. But no, it's beyond that. It, it, they, they, they have a trick to their madness. Understand? You have it. It's like Ricky Ricardo. Remember Ricky Ricardo? I love Lucy. We all used to love. I love Lucy. Come on, we watch. I don't care. We still watch it today. Black and white. We're still good. It makes she makes you laugh. But the the, the the Ricky Ricardo situation was based on Ricky Ricardo was a Cuban witch doctor. And he would sing a song called Baba Lua Ye, and that song has to do with a principality that ruled and reigned Cuba, and that same principality Fidel Castro had a contract with. So that principality, when you start singing the song, Babalu Aye, and if you put that song in YouTube, you see Ricky Ricardo getting demon possessed. Demon possessed. In your book, you talk about how often you went to clubs at night. I'm asking you questions that we didn't talk about in the first service. Mm -hmm. How often you went to clubs. Tell everybody what time you got there, what time you left. How many times a week did you go, and why did you love looking for Christians? It's like three questions in one, but I know you got it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the key is you come to the devil's camp. 
You're a Christian. You say, I love God. I believe in God. He's my Lord, but you lie about it. But you come to the club. So when you come to the club, I go, I go there at 11 o'clock, make sure you get there before I do, because you get to the club around 1030. So when you get to the club, I make sure that you have talk, you have alcohol in your system already, because open gateways and portals into your life. So when you're in the club, right, I, I recruit you, but the devil said, that's a Christian. The devil points you out. The devil points you out, I go over to you, and I give you the question mark. I know something about you. Right away, I'm opening you up. That's the first key that I use to open you up. You're going to say, you don't know me. Second key, third key, yes, I do. Fourth key, let me tell you something. Now, you re- now you're open because you have an alcohol spirit. You're open to receive the poison that I'm going to put in your spirit. And then I give you my number so you can call me. So you can call me so I can recruit you to the dark side. Because you're already a lukewarm Christian anyway. So it's so easy to get you to the dark side. And on top of that, you, so you, you justify the situation by saying, well, I don't drink alcohol. I drink Portland Spring at the club. But then what you do with your eye gate and your ear gate at the club? The, what you look with the little girls walking with the little miniskirt and you staring at her lust, lust, perversion spirit, spirit of lust. What you do with the music when they're singing demonic music, they're singing music that has curse words that you're feeding into your spirit, man. And... In your book, you also say that a lot of these Christians that show up to these clubs, they think they're Christians, but they're not Christians, um, and they don't know their word, and so you fillet them. Oh, they just roast them, you know, because the bottom line, you know, uh, it's a form of godliness, right? So we have a form of godliness, but we deny the power. We have no encounter. So when you go into these clubs, you have a form of godliness, and sometimes people say, well, I'm... I, the reason I go to clubs because I want to uh, quote unquote evangelize. Really? It's too loud. <laughs> I can't hear you. Jesus, what? <laughs> Jesus, who? When I had 10 coronas already, it's a setup of the enemy to draw you into his camp. You can't draw, he, the devil knows that he, he wants you to draw you to his camp. Once you're in there, he has you. Legal rights, stronghold bondages happen in that moment of time. So you, you, you've cre- sometimes they create a Jesus. It's not the one in the Bible. You create your own Jesus in your own mind. So let me push back a little bit. What if I say to you, or someone in this room says to you, John, I'm going to these social clubs or I go to these bars. I just want to chill out. I just want to relax. Not everything is spiritual. It's like, it's like you telling me I don't believe in gravity. But throw yourself off the building and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's it's whatever you justify and you compromise, you give the devil legal rights. So you, I can, I can, you can tell me, I can go to the, listen, I, you, then if I want to relax and I want to unwind, I just go to a fellowship. You know, I don't have to go to a club or something of the world because the God of this world is waiting for you there. So there's nothing to relax, nothing to unwind. There's nothing there that has in common with you in the Bible and your spirit, man. Because the devil's after your spirit, man. Because if the devil knows if I can weaken your spirit, man, your soul will have ownership over your spirit, man. You become a carnal Christian. Are, you, are, are we wasting your time? <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, there's a guy who won. I'm going to say this for all the people who, um, who aren't into sports. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Tom Brady um, who's won more Super Bowls as a quarterback than any quarterback in the history of the NFL. Uh, he plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, here's a picture of him. This is Tom Brady, and this is his um, wife. His yeah, his, his crazy wife, uh, Giselle, uh, who's a supermodel. Uh, grew up and was raised in Brazil, and she lives here now. And she's married to Tom Brady. I'm gonna play a video um, of Tom, someone interviewing Tom Brady, and then I want to ask uh, Pastor John what his thoughts are about the video. Uh, take a look at this. She put together a little altar 
what are your thoughts about that? Get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you don't need her. It, 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 it's so much, it's so much to that. But I just want to break it down quickly. It's so much to that. First of all, he's a man gifted by God to play a game. Every good gift comes from God. You don't need a witch to win, right? You you hear in his voice. You hear in his voice. Now he's an Ahab, because he broke him down to an Ahab. He said, first I didn't believe. Now I believe. Now I submit to my wife. I submit to her authority. I submit to the witchcraft. I, I bring altars, I bring shrines, I do, I, 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 he repeat things, chant things and whatnot. He is open to the deception of now his life is being altered by his wife, which is a Jezebel in the house. So now she controls him, a man that before, a man that can play the game with his eyes closed, because when you gift, you're gifted by God. And now he's into, now he's into a system of components of, of worshiping and praising and glorifying and submitting to the witch, and she's the avenue to the devil in his home. So he has no authority as a man of God, a man, a man at home, as, as a, of the God, if, even, even if he's not a godly man, as, as a man that's supposed to lead his family. And he's not, she broke him down. She fragmented this person that whatever I tell you next year, you're going to believe it before it happens. It's a manipulation witchcraft. On her, I mean, she's from Brazil. I know she her witchcraft is pretty good. What are your thoughts about secular music and movies involving magic, like Harry Potter or Marvel movies or anything like that? It, 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 Hollywood, it, Hollywood isn't dated with witchcraft. Understand that Hollywood, even the Christian people in Hollywood, they full of witchcraft too. I told you some stories at six o'clock. Where do you come? <laughs> That's all tonight. I had I had lunch. With Katy Perry's dad, I tell you some crazy stuff. I, I hung out with people that did the movie Unplanned. I hung out with the people that did the movie Heaven is Real. I tell you some things, a form of God, but denying Jesus in the mix. And, and, and when I tell you about movies, the movie is the movie. It is the wine eye monster on the television or on the screen to manipulate you and control you, which I gave. The music is in music, devil led worship in heaven. The music down here is a form of worship to the devil. Ask Beyonce, okay, ask Jay-Z, ask Mark Anthony, ask Jennifer Lopez. You know Jennifer can't sing, come on. <laughs> but, but when you sell your allegiance and your devotions and your commitment to the devil, he gives you contracts. And you hear in the music, you hear in the, even, even Spanish people. And, and you know Spanish people, you know Celia Cruz. What she used to say, Viva Chango, in her songs. She was singing to the person that she got crowned into the Santeria, which is, and what Santeria means, worship of saints. It's not worship of saints, it's worship of demons. So you hear it in the music. Every time in the music, they drop lyrics. Even in the Super Bowl, the last Super Bowl, you saw it, right? It didn't look like it was nothing. It looked innocent, but the lyrics and the tone and the, and the words and what they were singing was the contract that were releasing out to the atmosphere of the audience to captivate them so you can chant with us. And as you chant and come in agreement with us, we got you in the devil's camp. Tell them about um, raising hands and all that stuff. And it's, a, it's a form of worship. The devil always wanted worship. So when you go into these concerts and you go into these, you go into these concerts and you go into this Super Bowl, what they do? They raise hands. What we do in church, we raise hands to worship the king. They raise hands because it's a, it's a form of worship, a form of, 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 of giving the devil what he always wanted. When he told Jesus, if you bow down to me and worship me, I'll give you this. I'll give you that. How could you give God what belongs to him? How stupid are you? <laughs> what if what if I what if I push back on you and I say Look, Harry Potter is a Disney movie? Oh well, yeah, that's what Disney trouble now. Perverted people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I give you I give you a good one. Remember the movie Twilight? Remember the show Twilight? One time the Lord said, "Look at that," and I looked at it. I saw one episode. I said, I don't see nothing wrong with it. No profanity, no nudity. I don't see nothing demonic on it. He said, no, you're not looking close enough. I'm like, what are you trying to show me, Lord? Because I was going to preach in this Christian junior high school. 
up in uh, Jersey. And God showed me that he said, that's me in the movie. I said, I don't see you in the movie. He said, you don't see me. It's because he is a twilight people that, that they're demonic, they're monsters, they're animals, and they're in love with human, humanity. And God said, you see how the devil is in love with humanity? You see, how, what is it that they have in common? And you see the twilight situation, the one episode I saw, they, it was the, 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 the twilight people was in love with the humans. And the devil can never love you, young people, because you made an image of God. He hates you. You know, I, I recently heard this comment that Christians are too smart to just walk right into demonic worship or to open themselves up to a demon standing before them. And so the play of the enemy is to say, well, if you're not going to just open up the front door and invite me in, I'll entertain you through media and movies, and then I'll get in that way. Well, that's why social media, if you see social media, right? If you see the social media, Instagram, Facebook, right? The greatest trick the devil has on people. You could spend, I, I bet the dinner my wife would sit there, and you see old people on their phone texting. And I'm like, when you were younger, you didn't even have a cell phone. And you see them on the phone, they're having dinner, like, and they're not even looking at each other. Young people the same way. And the young people, is, and, and people in between. Why? Because the devil knows one thing. He, the devil understands one thing. He knows you have a day. And how much could I steal from you that day? And he starts stealing your time. You can do 10 hours on Facebook. You can do 5 hours on Instagram. And you can only give God 15 minutes. So who is your, how could you say, Lord, Lord, he's my Lord, but you're a liar. That's why the Bible said, redeem your time. The days are evil. Give me the best of your day. What do you say to the person that um, is sitting here in this room and they're listening to you and say, I believe every word you're saying. But on Tuesday, whenever they think about this moment, they think to themselves, man, John Ramirez thinks everything's spiritual. My goodness, not everything is spiritual. Okay. I'm just having a good time. I'm just having fun. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. It, this, this, this is what the devil does. The devil can't come up and say, hey, I'm, I'm Lucifer. Nice to meet you. You want to say, get out of my face. Obviously, we're going to say that. But the devil has avenues to introduce himself to culture, to music, fashion. He knows that these are the avenues of the bridges he can connect with your social media. And, and you, you might not say, oh, everything is spiritual, but what happened to the guy that stays home and he played his video games? And the video game become a false reality that he can go into a school and shoot people. No one is born saying, I can't wait till I'm 21 so I can kill 20 people. Or someone that walks into a Boston, in, in Buffalo, walk into a market because the skin of someone else is darker than theirs. It is, it is, it is the fashion of the... Same thing with the COVID-19. The COVID-19 was for Christians. It wasn't for the world. It was for us. But you know how it was for us? The, the COVID-19, because it was just a preview of the movie that's coming later. Wear the mask, you can't buy. Wear the mask, you can't come in here. You don't have the mark of the beast, you can't come in. You don't have this, you can't do that. You can't shop and you can't buy here. It is just a preview of the real movie that's coming. So, they, so the devil has to understand, we don't blush anymore. You know, the last time so when you were young, people say, you like that girl, you turn red like a lollipop. We don't do that anymore. We don't blush. Because it becomes the norm. I have to fashion you. I have to, I have to fashion you to a system. Because the devil believes in systems and components. Even in the church system. That's why Jesus was born outside of the system in the major. And Jesus died outside, and outside of the city. Outside of the system. So we don't have to belong to the system. So this next question is from a friend of mine that uh, he had to travel on business, so he wasn't able to be here. And he goes, ask him this question for me. He says, look, man, I'm human. And if 
What I look at opens up a door for the enemy. What I listen to opens up the door for the enemy. What I think about opens up a door. What I say opens up a door. Man, I'm human. How am I supposed to get through the end of the day without opening up a door for the enemy? Well, don't walk in the flesh. Walk in the spirit. All right, because, right, walk in the spirit. I live in California. You got wackos over there, right? And, and then you got, you got Looney Tunes in New York City. Right, so I live in, I mean, you can't live anywhere. I mean, people live in Egypt. <laughs> people live in California and live in Egypt to come to here, to, to Texas. Right? Amen. Say amen. It's, it's, God's, right. it's God's country yeah, right here. coming here, right? I mean, the whack, the, the whack that one go to Austin, right? Because they whack you over there, right? <laughs> and then you got the New Yorkers, they come here, right? I mean, so, 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 I, get, I got both, both worlds where I live at, right? So, 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 and, and, and. Girls and women and men, and we live in a society that, that we have lost our shame. There's no shame. They dress the way they want to dress. They look the way they want to look. And so what am I going to do? So if I walk to the mall, you know, and I see a woman coming from a distance, and I know I see her from my provincial, I already know she's dressed on a, on a, on a, you know, in a way that is uh, ungodly. Let's just put it this way. So when she passed by me, I don't have to look at her. Because if you look twice and then you lust it. So I'm not gonna play the devil's game and give into it and then paint it. In a, and I'm not talking about your friend. I don't want to hurt his feelings. I hurt his feelings anyway. Uh, his his feelings. His feelings. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm not gonna paint that I'm human. I'm not human. I'm in, I'm in the spirit. I'm in Christ. Human is the ones that are in the world. And the lukewarm Christians are human. I'm not human. I'm in the spirit. So I've grat I, grat I don't gratify my flesh. I please the spirit man. Because the soul is not going to tell my spirit man what to do. My spirit man will control my soul. So that made me a powerful Christian in my walk. That was good. Um, you have really strong feelings about Christians participating in Halloween. What do you say to the person that says, <laughs> you guys are ahead of me. Uh, <laughs> What do you say to the person who says, look, I'm just, I'm just having fun with my kids. I'm dressing up my kid as Scooby-Doo or Princess Elsa. We're just having a good time. I don't want my kid to feel awkward when the other kids are dressing up as Elsa and my kid isn't. You know, what's so bad about that? It's funny because people's minds are so conditioned to the flesh than to the spirit, because you ask yourself, does, does candy taste better on Halloween? It's still the same M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so special that a uh, Hershey bar tastes better on Halloween? So, so, so you dress your kids up, you know, you dress them up like Omo, or you dress them up like uh, Little Mermaid from Little Ariel, from whatever that movie was. You dress her up that way, right? But you dress her as a marine spirit. Right? So you dress, you dress your kids up, uh, Noah, and you dress your kids up like, well, he just cast by the friendly ghost. Young people don't know who he is. But you, 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 what you're doing is you're saying that I'm changing my kids' identity, spiritual DNA, when I dress them up because the devil understands one thing in Halloween. He understands that if he can get you dressed up, he can take your identity and your spiritual DNA. So when you dress your kids and you and then you say, I, I'm, I'm just taking him around the neighborhood, I'm watching over him, but you chick or treating and you're dressing up and you come in agreement with a holiday that is so despicable, so demonic, so diabolical, so satanic, that now your kids are five and eight, and then when they get to 18 and 15, you wonder why your kids are doing drugs and you don't want to come to church anymore, and you say, well, they grew up in church, I don't know, maybe it's the pastor's fault. No, it's your fault. Your crazy self took them out and you opened doors. And now the devil came to collect for the bill that you didn't pay. Because everything's a passive fall. Yeah. All right. Next question. There was a girl named Rachel, and I want to talk about the power of prayer for every single parent in this room that goes, oh, shoot. You're talking about me. You know, I can't go back in time and fix it. Uh, I opened up doors, but I want to talk to you about the power of prayer of a parent um, who's, who derailed your intentions over a girl named Rachel that you were dating, 
and you, you, couldn't, you couldn't fulfill your desire um, because she had praying, praying parents. Talk a little bit about that. You know, one thing, uh, one thing I, I, I'd say with this girl named Rachel, her real name was Vanessa. I put different names in the book because I didn't want them to steal glory from God in the book because uh, people say, oh, my name is in the book. No, the book, the book is about Jesus and the love that he had for me, that he saved me. And, uh, and, and Rachel was a, a, a prodigal son. And we, we, we went out and we did our thing and, and I, she came to one witchcraft party and I wanted to recruit her to the witchcraft world because her parents knew that her kids was in, the, in, in a state of uh, backsliding. They were always praying for her, praying for her. So, so, so her prayer, the power of prayer, no matter what your children are, no matter what they are, the power of prayer works. So the power of prayer works. You might not see it. You might not. A lot of times you think that because you don't see things in the natural, you don't know what God's doing in the supernatural. So this girl came to a witchcraft party. The demon said, recruit her because we want her. But the end of the story was they couldn't have her. And because she saw the transformation in my life and she saw what God did, that even pushed her to come back to Jesus Christ. And today she's still serving Jesus Christ. Because, because the power of prayer works. And I, she was untouchable, even though she was in a black backsliding state of mind. It's powerful. And I, I like that word you just used, untouchable, because that was the word you used in your book. He had every intention on converting her. He's a high-ranking Satanist. Up and he, he could Warlock. not. What's that? Warlock. Oh, he's a warlock. warlock. Warlock is a person that runs regions and authority. Some people say, I'm a warlock, right? And I'm looking at him and I say, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not a warlock. I say, I see, the, I see your rank in the demonic world. You, Elmo, not a warlock. <laughs> and the reason I say that, the reason I say that is because a lot of times you see people give themselves titles in the church. I'm a bishop. Mm. Well, you only got five people in your church. <laughs> That's just a title. You're not a bishop. Yeah. Understand? So, 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 so here in the demonic world, they give themselves title. But I, in, the, in, the, in, in, in the reality, I was a warlock. And warlock is when you be trusted with regents and you trusted with atmospheres in the demonic side. So I'm able to shift things in the demonic side. I'm able to shift things in the region. And I'm able to shift the atmosphere because the devil, the demons, has given me that power and that authority and that contract and those legal rights to do so. So, so I know how to operate. When I was in the witchcraft, I know how to operate from the second heaven, the first heaven, and territorial spirits on the ground. I couldn't touch the third heaven because Jesus lived there. But I was sure had, I had control and I had authority over the first and second heaven and everything on the ground. What would you say to this room that says, wow, um, well, hold on, let me ask you this. You used to astro project yourself um, into houses and over neighborhoods, and um, and that can happen into animals within a home. Yep. Um, talk a little bit about that. It, it, it's uh, I used to ask you project. That means you have a contract with the demon. It's called a civil cord. The civil cord is not like a cord. The people say, "Oh, I cut the civil cord." You, psh, you don't know what you're talking about. So it, it, it's it's a it's a, you cut you cut the contract between the demon and the person, so the person cannot actually project to the house. The legal rights, the contract, the, the commitment that they have with the, with the demon, because you can't actually project yourself. That's why Christian saints are actually project. Christian don't actually project. We don't do that and all that. So so the actual projecting the, this whole situation with the actual projecting and going into different region to to reinforce the demonic in that region because the devil needs a human being to do it. So I will actually project or well, I come into I, I come into uh, I, I will come in and shift myself into a wolf end up in your house and you see this black thing with red eyes. That was me. I know how to shift shift myself into animals or the demons will get into your animals. That's what happened to my to my wife. The devil got into uh, demon got into into her, her dog. They were doing witchcraft from her from Thailand, and got into the dog about a year ago. And, and the dog bit her chest and, and put the teeth right into it. It was a demon, but thank God the Holy Spirit protected her. And when she took her shirt off, there was only a mark. There was no teeth inside her chest, yes. and, and she got attacked that way, and all that. And then I, I broke the witchcraft off them, because you know it's power in Jesus. Amen. Yeah. 
Now, in your book, you said when you would astral project yourself, there were some houses that you could not hover over neighborhoods. and neighborhoods you could not hover over. Tell them why. Yeah, yeah, it's, again, it, we underestimate the power of prayer and unity. There's power in unity, there's power in prayer, right? So, so there was neighborhoods that I had to go in, into their neighborhoods, into that region to curse the neighborhood. But I mean, at the time, I wasn't a Christian. I, obviously, I didn't, know what the, you know, I didn't know what the church looked like in regards to the spirit realm. So I would see these people, I, I would call them hallelujah people, right? They were dressed funny. They were, I could tell there was uh, hallelujah people by the way they were dressed, right? So, but they would, they, had, they, they would do a circle. That means unity. Unbreakable, untouchable, unmovable. They knew there was real true intercessors. I would say the Nehemiahs of the neighborhood. They were the watchmen in the world. They would hold them circles and pray. So when I would land, I come and land into the neighborhood in the spirit. Now, the thing is in the spirit are more real than the things in the natural. So I would land in the spirit round and they would chase me out to the power of prayer. And they know how to pray spiritual warfare. So you could pray lollipop prayers. They, they, they don't, they'll just get you so far. But when you pray spiritual warfare prayer because the kingdom of violence, the kingdom of God suffer violence, the violence take it back by force. So when we pray spiritual warfare prayer, they would chase me out and I was not able to take over that region or control the region or, or reinforce that region because they knew how to chase me out. So my assignment was void. So we, we just heard about how a parent can can protect their children through the power of prayer, regardless of where they're at. How does someone in this room say, I want to put a perimeter around my home, my apartment, my ceiling, my walls, my floor, my car, to where no demons can come torment me or certainly not astral project themselves? How do you protect your own territory, your own home? Scripture. Scripture, Zechariah chapter 2, 5, a wall, I put, right, Zechariah 2, I put a wall of fire upon my house right now, around my house, in my house, around my family right now, no weapon formed against us will prosper, I break every hinder and delay, block the distraction, I break, destroy, dismantle, I send confusion to the devil's camp, I confuse their language, let them attack one another, I put the judgment of God upon them, every wicked spirit to try and come against my purpose, my destiny, my marriage, my children, devil, you're a liar right now, I incarcerate you right now, I put, I put release angels from Michael's quarter to come down, and arrest every demonic demon. I break every reinforcement, every retribution, every backlash, retaliation, devil has to go in the name of Jesus Christ. I have the power, the authority in Jesus Christ. Devil, listen to me. I'm attacking you from the third heaven. I don't fight you from down here, baby, because this is your territory. I'm fighting you from up here, sitting with Jesus Christ in the third heaven. The highs of the highs of the heaven. I mean, every devil, every demon, every witchcraft, every suicide, root worker, every demonic, every demonic force of every kind is submitted to the authority of Jesus Christ. I have authority over you, and I have power over you in Jesus' name. Um, when, when we built uh, the schedule for today... Um, interview in the first service, interview in the second service. We have something going on in the afternoon. Uh, but you said over the phone, hey, on Sunday night, no interview. I can do whatever I want with no time limit. And I said, absolutely. What are your plans for tonight? I already know the answer, but you say it better than I say it. So My go ahead. My plans tonight is, is, you know, there's spiritual warfare. There's two kinds of spiritual warfare. There's defense and offense, right? The defense and offense win championships, right? So my, a lot of Christians, they stay in the defense too long. You smell like toast, right? So you stay in the defense too long, and you're like, well, I'm waiting on God. But that doesn't work that way. That's a lie. I'm waiting on God. God said, I will always do my part, but I'll never do yours. Mm -hmm. So tonight, you come and do your part. Tonight, we come, we come, we come tonight, we went on the offense. We're going to charge the devil. We ain't going to let the devil charge us. So tonight, when you come, you bring every demonic activity, every demonic thing that you practice, every tarot card. I don't care if you're 10 years old, I pay with the Ouija board. I'm 50 now, but you still got open doors. You still let the gate open. Because it's like saying, if, if, I, if someone committed a crime when they was 15 years old and they're 95 and they figure out he committed a crime, they're not going to say, well, you're 95 years old, we're going to let you go home. No, we're going to lock you up. Right, because the, that, that situation is still unsettled. So you need to come on all your situations, your compromise, anything, stronghold, bondages, anything in your family, bloodline, generational curses in your bloodline, anything that is happening. Because listen, what you don't kill in the spirit is gonna end up killing you in the long run. Tonight is a night to set it off against the enemy. Spiritual warfare, powerful, powerful preaching, and powerful deliverance right here at the altar. You bring your devils, bring your enemies to church.
now, now let me say this for, for anyone in the room who says, well, I'm glad I came this morning. I'm getting a lot of information. I don't need to come tonight because I don't have any devils. I'll say two things to that. Number one, I've never met somebody that, well, I have met a couple, but in most case situations, people don't say, I got devils. Um, most of the time, they don't know they have devils. But assuming you're right, and you may be right, you don't have any devils at all tormenting you at all. Um, now, in Matthew 16, 23, <laughs> Peter had a, a demon tormenting him, and Jesus had to look at him and say, get behind me, Satan. And that, was, that guy was as close to Jesus as, as anyone could have while he was on earth. And so I would like to say that you could be being tormented, but you don't even know it. However, let's make that assumption. No demons, nothing. I would encourage you to come for this reason and this reason only. When you watch John Ramirez, Pastor John Ramirez, praying for people and they are set free, there is a burst of faith that happens on the inside of you. And what you know, this sense of knowing is, and it may not be this verse that comes to your mind, but your spirit will testify. In Romans chapter 2, verse 11, it says he has no favorites. So when you see him pray and someone get delivered, the spirit will tell you, you can pray that same prayer. And your loved ones will be delivered. Your wife will be delivered. Your husband, your children, your mother, or your mother-in-law. Maybe not your mother-in-law. That's a tough one. <laughs> the last, service, the last service I was in, in Delaware, I had about 10 Amish people came to the meeting for deliverance. And they snuck out from the camp. Whatever camp, camp, yeah, then they camp somewhere. I guess I don't know what that is. Yeah. They climbed over the wall. They came for deliverance. Ten Amish people came for deliverance, and yet though there was nothing wrong with them. I was just kidding about the mother-in-law thing. I think my mother-in-law is here. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Are you here, Jill? Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, there she is. I was uh -oh. just kidding about uh -oh. the mother-in-law thing. Get, get him in the back. All right, this is the last and final question. Church starts tonight at 6, uh, six o'clock. Last and final. I say one thing. You know, yeah. one thing, a pastor says something that is very powerful, and you can take this to heart. When I was in Times Square Church, and this is something powerful you need to take to heart. When I was in Times Square Church, Nikki Cruz came. I didn't know who Nikki Cruz was, right? I kind of knew of him, but I didn't know it really. And I saw Nikki Cruz sit down in the back of the church, you know, in the pastor's room, and I was part of security uh, ministry, volunteer. And he was, he was just sitting with the people. He was just joking with people and just, you know, being playful with the people, whatever. Some people came over to see him. And I wasn't even in ministry. I wasn't even thinking about being in ministry. To me, it was like foreign. And I saw him stop and say, he was just talking to people, having a good time. And he said, stop, let me pray for you. And I saw something in the spirit. I was shocked. I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, why, Lord, you gave that to him? Why'd you give it to me? And I didn't know. And then I, I read Nikki Cruz's book, Run, Baby, Run. And I was like, Lord, if I ever write a book, give me that too, right? And I couldn't believe it. And then I said, Lord, another thing I said, at Times Square Church, it was the service starts at 6 in the evening. And Nikki, at 4 o'clock, if you were in there at 4 o'clock, there were no seats. And I saw that too. I said, Lord, give me that too. You know, and I was asking for things in the spirit that I saw on someone else and encouraged me. And it made me go deeper with God. And it made me go further with God to see things that I said, Lord, if you give it to him, you can give it to me. I would do the right thing with it. And tonight, if you come, you might see things in the spirit that you might have. And you might be an intercessor. You don't know. You might be a person for deliverance. You don't know. You might be a person that God's called you for the end time to usher the kingdom. You don't know. But this is your divine appointment to come and see for yourself in the spirit what God has for you. And let me give a testimony to that. Um... Uh, about three, those of you that attend church here regularly, you're aware of this. Um, we go for deliverance, and I'll tell you how it started. Is I, got, I knew we needed to start going for deliverance. I knew that in my heart. But I needed to be exposed to it because it's very difficult to reach a level that you have not been exposed to. And so I got in a plane, flew to a church for one night to sit on the front row four months ago to watch Pastor John speak. Next morning, I flew home. He was speaking in a church across town. I go to the church, sit on the front row, and watch him. What was the fruit of that? 
after I see it, then I go, okay, so that's what it looks like. We can do that. I come back for the last three months, four months. Not only do we see physical healings like we have for the last three years, now we're seeing deliverance. What happened? The only thing that happened, the only thing that happened was I needed to be exposed to the gift. Once I saw it, then I'm, okay, now that I've seen it, now I can rise to it. And so I want to encourage you to come out for that reason. Last and final question. How did you get saved? And let me say this is, uh, uh, how did you get saved? Uh, I do need to say this. When the service is over, I don't want there to be a line from here to out the door of people that want to talk to him because we've got another event that is planned for him and we got to get him to that event. How did you get saved? And make sure you include the train, uh, the train ride. I, it, it, it was, first of all, I went to church. I got demon possessed. I grabbed the pastor by the throat and he almost died that day. And, and, and the sad thing about the whole thing, there was no anointing to say, you know, release them in Jesus' name, get them out, you know, sit and get off them, whatever. It was 10 men that came and pried my hands off the pastor's throat. I was half demon possessed. I picked them up in the air one hand. The pastor weighed 230 pounds and I could pick them up in the air one hand. And he had no anointing to say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Loose me now in Jesus' name. Nothing. All that. It was 10 people that saved his throat that day because he was turning blue. And that, 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 during that time, it was amazing because I was not looking to be a Christian. Believe me. Didn't want to be one of y'all. I was very happy as a devil worshiper. I made peace to go to hell as a devil worshiper. I was high rank. I mean, I was in the highest of the highest of the devil's kingdom, comfortable there, having a living the vida loca, with a, like Ricky Martin, without the gay part. <laughs> living that life. But October night, I sat in my bed, and Jesus was pressing me one way, and the devil was pressing me the other. I was like in the point of the breaking point. I couldn't think anymore. My mind was so, I was so drained. I was so out of it. And I said, well, I have to talk to one or the other to tell them I don't want to, no dealings with you. So I said, I don't want no dealings with Jesus. I would never want to be a Christian. I'd rather die. I'm in peace. I go to hell. No big deal. I'm, I'm willing to go there. And that night, I remember in October night, I was sitting in my bed and I went into the anesthesia sleep. It was, and I had surgery, eye surgery before, so I know what anesthesia feels like. You have no control, you just fall out. And I was going to the anesthesia sleep, and the only thing that came out of my mouth, and it was in my own words, I believe God put him there. It was, if you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, then you show me today, or leave me alone. And when I went into the sleep, I, 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 my body, my spirit left my body, and I was on this train going hellbound. The train, was going so fast and the train was crowded with people, but you couldn't see the faces of the people, but the terror in the train, the people knew, they guaranteed knew we were going to a place that we weren't coming back. And then in the train, Jezebel was on the train because I had a contract with Jezebel in the demonic world. I had a, a demon contract with Jezebel and Jezebel was on the train and she was saying to me in demonic tongues, you're a traitor, you're a traitor. But I couldn't, I couldn't understand why she was calling me that. And when the train hit hell, it was an explosion in hell. It, was, it felt like someone dropped one of these crazy bombs on the military. And when the doors open, you feel the suffocation that comes from hell. And when the suffocation hit, I stepped on the ground in hell. And, and it's, 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 it, hell is a location. Hell is really means the absence of God. When, when I stepped in hell, the, on the ground, it go, it breathes like a person. It just breathes like a person. The, as I stepped in it, it feels like stepping on, on marshmallows. And it breathes like a person. If you read the book, uh, Revelation from Hell, Mary Kay Baxter, she said hell is an organism, have different body, it's like a shape like body parts. And the part that I was in hell, it breathes like a person. Every time I stepped on it, it breathes. And then... The, the fear, the, the fear in, in, in hell, the torment, really, it's not even fear, it's like a torment, but it's alive. It's like a person who breathes on you. It wraps around you like, like, like a straitjacket. 
and then it breathes on you. You can feel it breathing on you. And it's the face of that, of that tormented fear is like on your face and it's breathing on you. And, and you, you can't even control it. You can't even take it off you. You can't even uh, discard it. You can't do nothing. It just, it just becomes a part of you. And then I was, I was running to the tunnels of hell. Uh, the, the ground breathes even harder and deeper. And, and I saw devil worshipers in hell. They were alive on the earth. And later I asked God, why were they in hell? They're still alive. He said, but they never make heaven. They, they, you, saw, you saw them in hell already. They're going to be in hell when the time comes. And as I walked through the portals of hell, the devil came out. And the devil started talking to me in the mind of said, I loved you. I loved you. Why are you leaving me? I said, I don't even know why I'm here. I said, I'm so confused. I don't know why I'm here. What, what, how did I end up here? What do you mean I'm leaving you? I'm, I'm just confused. I, I don't know which direction to go. He said, I have to destroy you because you know all the, the, you know all the secrets of my kingdom and witchcraft and how I trap humanity. So you have to die because you can't live. Because if you live, you tell the people about my tricks and my trades, my wiles, my schemes, my patterns and cycles. You tell them about demons and tell them about the kingdom of darkness. Everything you learn from the age of eight. I taught you. I trained you. you I thought you were going to be with me forever. And I said, I don't know I'm here. And then when he went to grab me, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared in hell. I know. I mean, the, the cross in Calvary, the one in Calvary appeared in hell. The same one appeared in hell. And I, I couldn't believe it. I, said, I, had, and I couldn't pull out of my pocket. I had shorts on and, uh, and a T-shirt. So there was no way I could pull this big cross out of my pocket. So when the devil made contact with the cross, he just dropped like, like a piece of paper. He just dropped. And I couldn't believe it. So I ran deep into hell. As I ran deep into hell, the ground, <laughs> the ground kept breathing harder. And the torment got deeper. And then the, the devil came out again. But this time he came out with the horns. And, and, and then the devil, the devil has like the, 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 his garments, his garments, uh, his garments. He fell from heaven are filthy, they're dirty. His garments are dirty. That's why when the devil approached you, he approached you as an angel light. But he approached you from a distance because he can't approach you from close because his garments are dirty. So when he came out again, he went to approach me. He went to grab me. As he went to grab me, uh, the cross came out again. And I said, and before the cross came, I said, you can, I said, I can destroy you. I told the devil. I showed him the marks that I sold my soul to the devil. I got, I got, I got the marks on my body. It was carved with, they were carved with a razor to shed my blood to sign the contract. Here, use this. Like, like this. That's how he felt like when he touched the cross. Like that, like nothing, like a piece of paper. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I said, this guy's so powerful in the kingdom of darkness, and he just dropped like nothing. So I ran into deeper into hell, and whenever he pulled out with the horns, he said, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to kill you. I'm not going to let you live, because if I can kill you here, you won't wake up on the earth. And when he went to Graham again, the cross of Jesus Christ appeared. And when the cross hit him, I mean, he dropped like that. And I, and I was like, I couldn't, then I went back into my body. I mean, it felt like I had electrical puddles on, uh, in my chest when they bring you from ICU. They try to bring you back to life. Yeah. That's how it came back into my body. Like these electrical things brought me back into my body. And I knew that was my, and the Lord said, I'm only giving you one chance to turn and follow me. Man, I left everything to follow him. Man. The, the reason why I gave him this paper is when he told me that story um, uh, a few months ago, he ripped off a piece of paper and he said, when that is, the devil came up, he was so powerful, he had these horns, he was huge, I was scared to death, and as soon as that cross came up, he ripped off a little piece of paper and he goes, the devil just flew like that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, I see some tricks, I see some tricks in the demonic world. That one day, Lord said, you're right, I'm in the book. I've seen chemical spiritual warfare that's coming to the church. And it's in the book of Matthew 25. Chemical spiritual warfare is when the term virgin falls asleep. In five, they all wake up, but only five makes heaven. 50% of the church makes heaven on the first round of the, of, of the rapture. I've seen the chemical spiritual warfare. I've seen a lot of things in the spirit realm. And for the devil to fall like a piece of paper like that, like nothing, because he made, he made contact with the cross, and it was a big wooden cross. And I know it was, that, it was ancient, because this cross was all wooden. There was nothing like that that I seen in, in the real world. I know that was a cross of Calvary. Let's give Pastor John a big round of applause. Thank you.